The following is a Journey to Comics Network production. Hey everyone, Lauren here from Foodies Watching Movies, and you are listening to the Best of the Week show, highlights from all the shows on the network this week. So get comfy and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Journey into Comics. Thanks for let all me drink, Let me drink this real quick. He's talking about beer. Well, I don't know if it's uh, – sorry, it just popped in my head. I don't. It's not very practical, although it has some cool abilities. But I really dug some of the Keyblades in Kingdom Hearts. Those were pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's just a big fucking key. And Is that like a keytar? I've seen those. with that, Like not, that band Deadsy that plays that, that guy that's got like a keyboard guitar, but it's shaped like a guitar, but it's no, a keyboard. So, so, but it doesn't have the keys. It's got the weird knobs and you got the right idea. all over it. Okay, you got the right idea. Keytar, it's like a keyboard guitar, a uh, keyblade. I don't think like, you got is, the right it's idea. It's like a keyboard blade. It's like blade. a key, like getting into oh, your house. Keys. Yeah, I've seen that. But like, it's a sword. That's like in Kingdom Hearts. Yes. <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> Precisely like that. Then why didn't you say so in the first place? Do you think there's going to be a, a lightsaber keyblade? Yes. But I don't Definitely. think you quite understand what a keytar is. I don't need I don't need you to <laughs> there, tell me. There's not you that like stand know. up with a keyboard thing. No, it's an actual guitar with keyboard instruments and stuff on it. Like you would be playing a guitar, but it's like keyboard esque. It's fucking weird, man. That's what I just said. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Why didn't you say Kingdom Hearts to begin with? I'm having a hard time with this guy. Pivoting. Um, <laughs> so another, once again, there's another weapon from Turok Evolution that I absolutely loved. And that was uh, this, it was, so they had a rocket launcher in the game. And of course, you know, it Who shot rockets. Who doesn't have rocket launchers that shoot rockets? However, Lord next, there was a secondary uh, mode to this rocket launcher. And it shot out like these little, these little homing you shall not things. Pass. And they followed you through walls, through everything. It, they were inescapable. They blue shells. Fo- huh? Blue That's shells! That's it! Essentially blue shells. That's the-, the best weapon in any game! Fact. The blue shell! Lightning bolt. Mm. No, nothing stopped the blue shell. That's nothing. True. Nothing. Have you not seen that video where lightning bolt, lightning bolt, Oh, lightning God, bolt, fucking lightning, lightning bolt. bolt. I have played... Best I- weapon ever. No. Okay. Best weapon ever. So, if you have a star. I'm going to... Tell you with a lightning bolt. So these fucking little, they're, they're, they're little boars, and they'll chase you around the map. Lightning bolt. And it's, it, I mean, they don't chase you for long because they'll catch up to you. Lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> they'll catch up to you, and when, and they just, they're, they're just instant kill. They, they, what they do is they, they, uh, they just attack like you. Just like blue turtle shell. Wouldn't that be hilarious? You get hit by a blue shell and you're ejected from the game. Like, gotcha. Fuck. <laughs> but they, they catch you, and then they just start. Eating you a, like from the inside out, and you're like, like if you if you shell. sit and watch the body, it like just starts disintegrating little by yeah, little. Yeah, that's what happens when I get hit by a blue turtle shell. That thing's got wings and spikes, and it hits you, and it just goes up in you and blows up. And next thing you know, you're just all comes like, in from your butthole. <laughs> oh man, that sounds familiar Turns too. Turns the frogs gay. Feels like deja Turns vu. Turns the frogs gay. <laughs> Something about buttholes and. Sorry, right, sodomites anyway, and all I know flaming, is that you said there's a rocket bubbles. launcher that kills you. Yeah, cool, awesome. Moving on. What was? I had another weapon. Have oh, you yeah. guys seen the new Alien trailer yet? There's a new Alien trailer. Mm-mm. I have not. Mm-mm. What are you talking about, pal? You haven't seen it yet. No. I ain't even gonna fucking that's a moot. That's a moot point. Then has anyone seen trailers for Nope, Ready Player One? Oh yeah, uh, I saw it in theaters. I don't remember. I need to see the movie itself. It is based on a book. Yes. Uh, the deal is, is they're living in some fucking dystopian world. It's totally shitty and stuff, but they've got virtual reality. So everybody goes into this virtual reality game called the Oasis. Um, when the owner dies, he. He's already made this video that comes out, and it says that whoever can find this special Easter egg... Which is an actual egg. ...in the virtual reality world gets the company. They get his inheritance. So, naturally, you have all these corporations that are just 
pretty Flooding much it. ruined the world already. Does that sound like a book some of these read before? At Maybe. least fucking 100 or 3 million. Or I can think of at least two. Continuing on. so Continuing on. You read? There. Who doesn't read? So Spielberg. This, so a lot of the, um, the guy that wrote the book had a lot of Spielberg references. So yeah. Spielberg is producing it. He didn't direct it. But I thought he directed it. He didn't nope. direct it. He's producing he's it. He's producing. Did you and it's not got, read? It's got a bunch of references to... It's not just Spielberg stuff. So let me try it off the top of my head. There's references to the Iron Giant. Yes. Street Fighters. Battletoads. Um, there's a Mortal Kombat. Major Tron reference. There's a this. Tron reference. There's a Back to the Future. Akira. It just reference. It's a huge pop culture. Fucking oh, it's also nonsense. got some sort of online kind of feel too, as well, because you're full on in depth VR. It's it looks pretty wild. Some of the reviews were less than flattering. Although to be fair, the review I read that was less than flattering was on Screen Crush. And lately, they have literally been posting like at noon. They say we don't know about this movie, and four hours later, post why this movie is amazing. It's like. Okay, I get you've got several writers, and you're expressing different viewpoints, but holy shit, enough with the clickbait bullshit. Like, yes. this is one of our writers hey, that didn't down, like it. Hey, calm down, you're starting to yell at me. This is another writer that did like it. Like, I'm, I, oh, they've done it. it. It's happened to me three times where I've seen it, and I'm just like, make up your fucking mind, Screen Crush. You know, that's why I don't pay a lunch. A lot of attention to movie reviews or the previews or much or anything. Me, I, just, me I just need to go watch it. And if it's going to blow me away, I'm going to tell my buddy, hey, that's pretty decent. You should probably watch that in the theater. A couple weeks ago, we went and saw, uh, without seeing very many trailers. Annihilation. Annihilation. How was that? I fell it was asleep. good. Uh, the, what were you going to say? <laughs> I said I fell asleep. We, got, we, <laughs> we got, were drunk. <laughs> we were drunk. <laughs> we, we, uh, we uh, decided to drink like four beers. Beers in the parking in lot the park. before we walked in, and then we walked in with a couple beers too. Yeah, in our my pockets. Coat. We oh were my god! Crazy. So we got on a, a Tuesday or Thursday. It was the middle. I of know because it was after. It was on a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, it was the middle of the week. It was literally last Tuesday. Oh, mm-hmm. Last Tuesday we got wasted. We got we got hammered drunk. Like <laughs> I wanted to go with you guys. It was fun. It, it we was, got hammered drunk, and we're, we build. thought we were going to watch Leonard Skinner with Jesus on was, vocals with Eagle's Wings, but instead we watched Annihilation. We saw Natalie Portman we, we, fucking we, struggling. We, we saw Natalie yeah. Portman fucking, and we are like, Natalie Portman tits, yeah, man, yeah, that and was it cool. just didn't happen. I got, oh, I got, there were no Natalie Portman tits, but you oh, did I, see you Natalie got Portman me. doing some riding. You yeah, got me some rode. super excited. Yeah. <laughs> You're no telling how cut. I felt, man. I was like, ah! and then you couldn't get to the end, and I was like, man, not what I do with this. Wow. And then wow. I then I fell asleep after she crawled in this <laughs> hole. Wow. And then there was this burning alien guy, and it was just like, Jesus. So it was okay. Okay. Our Lord and Savior, Dale. <laughs> we're about heart. to. We're gonna do it. We're gonna go spoiler mode. Okay. All right. Spoiler, guys. This is spoiler alert for Wait, the movie Annihilation. But you're gonna spoil it for me. Do you want? To, do you not want me to spoil it for you? I don't know. Nobody gives a dick about okay, it. Okay, then I won't. I won't spoil. But I'll give a quick synopsis. Okay. Okay. It's a. They call it like a horror film. It's a. It's a thriller. A thriller. A thriller. It, it's a sci-fi thriller horror. And it's got a slow build, and people start getting picked off. And then at the end, there's a really crazy sci-fi turn. And then there's a guy where they cut his belly open and his guts are moving. It was fucking weird. That was my favorite part. Oscar Isaac's cutting into someone's belly. Oh, Oscar, Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac's yeah. cuts his belly open like it's a microwave door and then shoves his hands in there and it's still moving around his hand, man. Like it was like a Facebook Live video. Like, all right, I'm like- gonna- all right, now I'm going to bust into this guy's tummy. It, it, it's like Rob Deirdrick's all like, man. Oh, look at this shit. Look at this shit. It, it's like Rob Deirdrick jumped on big shoulders up in heaven and said, look at this shit. It's still moving. <laughs> it was nasty. It was hard to watch because they showed you. Like, they showed you him cutting mm-hmm. into the stomach. You're like, oh, no. Old boy was way too calm. But he was already kind of fucked up. 
He was, oh, man. He was really fucked up by oh, whatever was in Oh, and then that chick it. talking about how her fingerprints are moving, and then there, she's not even sure if she should cut herself open to see if her guts are moving, too. Man, no, that weird. was, like, intense. It was weird. It was a good movie, though. It was a good movie. I won't I de- spoil it. I definitely need to go watch it again so I'm not so drunk passed out, I don't know, at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were so drunk. From a college campus in the middle of nowhere, USA, it's time for the Nora Report with your host, Joanna Norris. Hello, everyone. I'm Joanna. And I'm Mish. And this is the Nora Report. Now, you may be wondering who the hell are these people and where the hell is Andrew? Well... To start, Andrew's not here, and it's April Fool's week, so you get to listen to us instead. <laughs> yay! <laughs> I hope it's yay. I hope you like fictional worlds. But, <laughs> you know, this is more of a serious show, but we come from Lit, the literature podcast. <laughs> so this Where it is, is not. <laughs> so this is going to be more Harry Pottery. And as serious as we would like to get. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> if if <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, it's only funny if you're seeing the spelling and thinking of serious black. But <laughs> but now that she's explained it, it's not as funny. So let's move on. <laughs> I do that so often. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but we are going to talk about the social injustices. In Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Just a few. I mean, there's a lot, but we don't want to sit here all day. No. So let's start with... The freedom of speech. Yes, the freedom of speech. And how there's only one newspaper that everybody gets. The Daily Prophet. That's the only newspaper you ever really hear of, other than the Quibbler and... Which nobody takes seriously, and it's has, it's been deemed irrelevant, and it's basically just a gossip tabloid. Yeah. But, let's see, what did we read earlier? The, that the ministry has to approve every single thing that goes into the prof, Daily Prophet, and they're very biased. Mm-hmm. Like, once we get to when Voldemort's coming out, You know, the ministry doesn't want everybody to know, so they just start putting down Dumbledore and Harry, and they're just wanting, making it to where everyone's going to believe what they want them to believe. Like, how fucked up is that? Completely. (laughs) And it, it gets to the point where they will only print what the minister is accepting, and they have actually started banning the quibbler because of its its willingness to publish anything. Yeah. Oh, the ministry. That gets so dark later in the books. It does. So another thing that's really messed up in the ministry that I've noticed is the vast wage difference between many of the workers... So we did some research and found that the minister himself makes over $200,000 a year um, U.S. money uh, as his wages, and the governors make about $100,000 a year. The the minister himself makes quadruple that of the Aurors, who, although they make a decent living at $51,000 a year, still isn't nearly as much as the department workers – who get paid minuscule amounts compared to everybody else. Yeah, and even at that, the Aurors, they're highly educated and way underpaid for how much work they put in to and how much they have to do. Like, they mm-hmm. risk their lives every day. And Arthur Weasley, which we've talked about on literature quite a few <laughs> times, he's so underpaid. So underpaid. You're barely making it. I know that they have a lot of kids, but I believe that they go to school for free. The only thing they have to pay for are their supplies. Mm -hmm. So at least there's that. But 
Yeah, we haven't been able to find how much department workers get paid, but I have found that it's approximately probably about $27,000 a year to $36,000 a year, which is nothing. Yeah, that is not livable, especially with that many kids. So they make it work. Mm -hmm. They make it work. But they're struggling. They should have a living wage to where they can all have clothes and books and survive. Right. I think the ministry needs to work on this. Yeah. Work work on your wages, Ministry of Magic. <laughs> because it is very unfair. Honestly, they should have a strike. <laughs> they should just have a strike. I second that. Okay, another thing that is super unfair is the house elves, which we get to see a lot of that in the fifth book when Hermione starts spew. But the elves did not take that as well as I thought they would. No, (laughs) they are insulted. (laughs) Yeah. They are insulted by her want and her drive to help, um make their lives better in their eyes it seems to hinder their work i guess by her wanting to leave these things around the castle that they might find i think she only really leaves them in the gryffindor common room yeah she starts leaving so many like socks and hats so that If they are to touch anything in the Gryffindor common room, they're going to be free. Red meat, we crave sustenance. Guys, we are not invading my aunt. I like the chocolate-covered marshmallow eggs, like the ones that come in an egg carton. Yeah, the marshmallow ones. And they're like a dollar. The um, Zachary brand? Well, we live right near Zachary plant, yes, and, and that's where they make them. Yes. Um, yeah, no, we need to get some of those because those are awesome. They're the thing is that delectable. what started off, at least what it seems like, as an Easter candy, but it's now becoming every holiday candy is are peeps. Oh, my God, yes. They're disgusting. I can eat, like, two, maybe it's one. It's the texture for me because, like, the softness of the marshmallow clashes terribly with the crunch of the sugar for me and it's just bad it they're not the worst candy i've ever had but i ate them when i was a kid i don't really have a like a desire to eat one like if somebody said hey man here's a peep and it's like okay uh, okay because i remember last year didn't wyatt get some i think so and then we just didn't eat them i think i ate like a couple and i'm like yeah i'm uh, like i'm good i I don't want any more (laughs) I find that the older I get, the less I'm really like candy, you know, um, unless it's a I miss, Twix bar well, or a Reese's cup. I miss gummy lifesavers. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I totally miss gummy <laughs> lifesavers. Those were the bomb. They probably still exist, to be honest. Yeah. But okay. So lifesavers holes. Do you, uh, <laughs> I, I got a package of these. A couple years ago, and they literally were the greatest thing I've ever had. And then I got a second bag of them, and then I'm like, okay, I've had enough. And those were the carrot cake uh, M and M's. Oh God! Oh. And nope, they were so awesome. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh this is amazing. And then by that second bag, I'm like, oh, too I, much. I gotta, I gotta finish them now. Oh, like no. one or two was okay. But there was no way I was going to eat an entire bag. They're doing a lot more with the M and M's. Like they, they took this long to do a caramel M and M, which is so surprising that they took this long to do that. And so amazing. And oh, they're doing another um, uh, vote for the M and M flavors. Oh, you know how they did the other one with the peanut M and M? So they had like three different peanuts. You had the coffee nut. You Mm -hmm. had the honey nut, which was amazing, and then the uh, spicy nut, right? I feel like I only tried no. the coffee and the honey. No, you had the other ones. Did I? Yeah, yeah. Because because remember we were we uh, that was the episode that we did uh, the one of the last sort of live episodes we did sort of Japanese. Oh yeah. And then that was like a that that was taco togetherness two. Dose. And uh, <laughs> we were ordered to bring enough back for everybody to try. Oh yeah. Um, okay. 
very uh, you know a uh, very in- uh, interesting um thing about like uh, about making podcasts uh, with our friends and our family because it's always just like, man, you guys take forever to do podcasts. You it's know? true. And it, well, I mean, well, and that night actually we did not take very long at all. We didn't really BS around, but it was still too long. Like, well, because like when we got back, it was like you guys took forever. It's like we're here before eleven. <laughs> What more do you want? It's like, man, we just like we you know we zoomed right through it. And we had a good time. Um, if there's one thing that I can say about podcasts, it's how easily and quickly uh, you can get away from you. Uh, more so in the time of when you don't see somebody all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, because it's like, all right, so I don't see Nate, I don't see Mike all the time. So when we're gonna podcast. It, it, number one is the setup. It's like, what are we going to talk about? Oh, number right, two, yeah. is there any other sort of business on the docket uh, to cover? As far as like, for me and Nate, we always talk about network stuff. Mm-hmm. I would much rather talk about that in person over the messenger. Every once in a while, it's over messenger, but in person, it's always like, it's it's easier to see his face. We are we understand each other, and then it's also like personally, how are you doing, man? How you know how are the girls doing? How you know, hey, you know, how, how's the fam? How you know, how's your dad doing? And uh, how's this going? And uh, oh, by the way, this thing happened, you know. And it's like after about a half hour of that, and it's like, what took you guys so long? It's like we're trying to have a relationship other than just doing a show. Joanne and I certainly could get done faster because we talk every day, but <laughs> <laughs> we don't because it's so much better to catch up in person and to like lay the show out in person well when you um even though most of the time we just wing it you know uh i will say there have definitely been times where we've definitely talked about nothing a lot about nothing and then just delayed starting the show that has happened but it's just it was something i thought of uh, intermittent because i thought of the whole my my brain's kind of like on it's not scatterbrained yet, although it kind of was. Cause We've I, had a rough week. <laughs> it, yes, yes, we have. But we went from, I'm like, hey, there's a new Eminem vote, to, to describing the honey one, to saying this is when we did it, to saying we got yelled at that night, and then going to, like, this is why we got yelled at. Welcome to podcasting with me. Um, <laughs> but, we always end up coming full circle. Okay, well, because we're going to, because the new, um, the new Eminem flavor vote Oh, you looked it up. Hooray. No, I'm going to. Oh. <laughs> um, the fuck have you been typing? I haven't been typing at all. I just started. Oh, I thought you were hitting keys over there. I just like hit click right now so I could type <laughs> okay, it up. I'm sorry. Jeez. New Eminem. Because and you want to do a podcast like together. I had thought about more it. More frequently. I had thought about it. All right. So the new flavors, uh, the last vote was all, they're like, they're all nuts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So coffee nut. Mm-hmm. Uh, spicy nut, honey nut. Mm-hmm. These are all crunchy. Ooh. And these are crunchy espresso. No. Crunchy raspberry. Mm. Crunchy mint. Mm-mm. And each flavor is made with dark chocolate wrapped. No. Maybe the dark chocolate raspberry. Like that would be my vote of those three. But yeah, I'm not impressed. Well, cause, okay, number one, we don't need another coffee flavor. That one. No, oh my God, coffee needs to just die. <laughs> wow, Joanna's like. <laughs> I know. Hating I'm this sorry. Right now. Uh, I do. I did like um, the the coffee nut because I felt like the coffee flavor wasn't overbearing. Mm-hmm. You know, be, uh, it's not like. Do you remember when Gretchen made those like chocolate? She didn't make them. Oh, she didn't make them? No. Um, we had a Dove chocolate party, and they oh, okay. were like a thing from Dove. Okay, well, because she gave them to me, right? Mm-hmm. And like they were like, they were coffee. Well, that's because they were chocolate-covered espresso beans. Yeah, I know. Like they were... actual coffee beans. So I know. That's why. So, but I don't, because this is going to be a crunch, like a little Rice crispy in there. Yeah. It's not going to be as, as as intense as that. But we don't need another coffee flavor. Cr- crunchy raspberry, they, they, they have a strawberry nut one now. That's out. I haven't tried it. I have no desire to. I don't have a lot of desire for the crunchy raspberry. And crunchy mint is more like... Is this going to taste like chocolate toothpaste? Exactly. 
Especially with the dark chocolate. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not as enthused. Not so much, no. Who won the last Lay's vote? Fuck it, I know. I don't even remember what the flavors were. The last ones I remember are like biscuits and gravy. That that one won. Yeah. That one won. Um which were surprisingly okay. They you know what? Yeah, they were. Uh out of the ones that of that year, that one was my favorite. Mm. Um but I I want to say 2017 cuz they don't have one yet. 20 I don't know why I keep yawning. <laughs> I don't know either. Um, it's not even that late. No, it isn't. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, I did try these. Okay. Which one of these won? I remember that like when they were still trying to narrow it down, you did like the this or that survey for them. Because you kept asking me like which flavor I would vote for. Okay. So these were the... Really? Shut up, cat. <laughs> cat, we're trying to talk about food. We're trying to talk about like like trying, we're trying to talk about potato chips. Um, so this this was written in October of last year. We need to see who won because I tried. I guess I only tried the one, but crispy taco was that one. Oh yeah, that was so good. Mm-hmm. They had uh, the wavy one. Was the avocado toast? It's such a millennial flavor. <laughs> I am genuinely unimpressed. <laughs> um, Someone in San Francisco submitted that. <laughs> you know, um, you you can actually look on the back of the bag and see where the person where they're from. But just uh, seems like something. Wa- you know, watch them be from like Kansas or something. Like a Bay Area hipster was like oceanfront we property need, in Kansas. We need, <laughs> <laughs> we need avocado toast chips. Shut up! My God! Go away! We're gonna We're fuck gonna the sodomites, sodomites, sodomites in the. Sodomites in the-, in the- Hi, everybody. I'm Matt, your usual host of Podcastrophy. I'm joined today by our usual guests, Blaine and Tyler. Oh, hey, what's up? What's up, y'all? Today we're going to be talking about some shit, y'all. What kind so, of shit, y'all? I don't know. What kind of shit you want to <laughs> talk about? All kinds of shit. Man. We'll just talk about the shit. What did you get me into? Fuck. I don't know. You asked to be on the show. Yeah. So I said, yeah, why not? Yeah. I heard there was beer here, so I came. Yeah, I usually have beer. We're We're doing this at my house. Yeah. It's because my mom won't let me use my room. Man. Man, mom, why you always ruin shit? Some bullshit, mom. God damn it. Stop bullying me. (laughs) Baxter's like, what the fuck? (laughs) Oh, fucking Cameron did that the other day. Except he sounded way more autistic with it. Oh, yeah, he even had the hands up and everything. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, what are we, uh... What do we feel like chatting about today, fellas? Man, I, I I feel so out of place this week. Like Nick and Nick Maxson and I, we hosted our, our usual episode of Journey into Comics earlier mm-hmm. this week and I just I felt so out of place, yet ever so there was so much familiarity but everything also felt out of place. Like I didn't I couldn't remember for the life of me our like our sign off. Like I, I, you just sit out of place like nine times yeah. in a row. Did you feel like a fool? I, I mean, I, I always feel like a fool to be honest. To I mean, be honest, what you kind of your idiot. sentence was saying like you felt out of place, which made me feel out of place. I don't even know where we're at right now. Where are we? I don't know what's going on, Baxter. What's going on in this world? All right, so uh, let's let's pick a topic. Let's choose a topic first off. We'll start there, and then we'll just kind of segue. To other places. So, let's start with Tyler. Tyler, what do you want to talk about? <sighs> All right, we're <laughs> talking about signs. Well, <laughs> uh, this, a couple weekend. Well, it, it would be this past weekend uh, here in the shitty state of Indiana. Here it is, almost April, and uh, 
Blaine and I went and saw the new Pacific Rim movie. Yes. Which IGN gave us 6.5 out of 10. Now, granted, IGN gives everything shitty reviews, so I just kind of expect that. And then at the same time, when I review, like, when I just critique a movie or review a movie by myself, I I do it a lot simpler, I think, than most most major media outlets do, because Pacific Rim, anything, whether it's a cartoon or, you know, what what have you, is never going to be an Oscar winner. Exactly. I, I, I don't... I go into the movie knowing that that's my expectation, and that's it, it should not shoot to be an Oscar winner because it's not going to be. No. You know, so when I saw they gave it a six six and a half out of ten, I was like, ah, okay, whatever, like I am with most IGN reviews. And then we went and saw it, and we both really enjoyed it. You actually told me that you liked it more than the first one. Yeah, so I didn't see the first one in theaters. I saw that pirated in my apartment i still haven't seen either oh definitely uh, okay definitely the first one has idris elba in it right yes yes and uh charlie hunnam okay. and ron perlman and ron perlman I love ron perlman the, the, see that's the thing about that i love ron perlman i do too, too. i ron, love ron perlman, ron perlman but, my favorite role with ron perlman in it though is all these people will point out like hellboy or you know sons of anarchy i loved him in the movie drive he was in Drive. Yeah, he played one of the mobster guys. What about Enemy at the Gates? He was also in that. He, he even though his role was small, he, he did very fucking well in that movie. Um, let's not forget he played the Beast in Beauty and the Beast. Did he really? Long ago, <laughs> like a live action Beauty and the Beast. Oh, see, I don't know that. Like long ago, it was all right. I'll either way, but yeah, I'll try I to pull seen something. Either up. so like, so Grim movie. Blaine liked it more than the first one, and. I really enjoyed the first one, and and that it goes back to what I was saying about it's not going to be an Oscar winner. You have you have to accept the movie for what the concept is. The entire franchise, which now <laughs> encompasses two movies, oh god, what the fuck? I, I remember this now. <laughs> that's uh, that's Ron Perlman, guys. Ron Perlman. But the entire the entire franchise, which is now two movies, uh, maybe a couple of graphic novels, I think, small comic series, but. It's about giant robots fighting giant monsters. Mm -hmm. So this isn't this isn't an overly complex, you know, plot. This isn't. It, it's just it. It's an action movie that's supposed to entertain you. And I, I don't see how you could call it a bad movie. You think it did its job? Absolutely. I I he he rated it like an eight or a nine. I definitely gave it a solid seven because I really enjoyed the first movie. And the tone of the first movie compared to this, the, the second iteration is a little bit more serious. This one has a lot more com comedic tones, mm -hmm. which, you know, in major cin cinema right now is kind of the trend, you know, with like Thor Ragnarok yeah. and, and all the big stuff right now. They're, they're trying to push the kind of ad libby ad comedy stuff a lot more. Um, so, hell yeah. And... You know, John Boyega did a fantastic job. I think he's a good actor. Well, I mean, it, like I've seen, I've only seen him. I haven't seen The Last Jedi, but I saw him in Force Awakens, and I thought he did a great job. It's and that's the thing, you know, you have you have such a big, a big role like <clears throat> Finn in Star Wars. You know, you look at Mark Hamill, never stepped out of Luke, other than Joker. Yeah. You know, any any role he had after that was kind of overshadowed by the fact that he played yeah. Luke in 1977. Well, also, when you look at, like you say, the Joker, Joker was a voice acting role. Absolutely. A lot of people probably didn't even know that was Mark Hamill mm -hmm. until they looked into it. Right. So, I, I know I didn't. I didn't know it until you told me in, like, what, 2007 that that was, Mark, that was Luke Skywalker. And I was like, no shit. I feel like I knew about that way later than that. But I'll believe it. It was in like high I'll school that it. you told me I'll that it was it. Mark Hamill. <laughs> I knew I knew very early on just because I saw like an interview of him at like Star Wars Celebration, which used to be in Indianapolis, which fucking sucks. It's in Florida now. But Florida you know, sucks. the bit well, Florida doesn't suck, but the fact that sinkholes, bro. Right, but the fact that we had the biggest the biggest Star Wars convention in the U.S., maybe even the world. Was in fucking Indianapolis, Indiana for over a decade. And, you know, when it came time to renegotiate the contract, we're like, eh, 
We'll just we'll just let you go. We're cheap as fuck. Yeah, I mean it's Indiana. This place fucking sucks. But <laughs> yes. Anyway, I I would definitely recommend anybody that just wants kind of a a rompy action movie definitely go see Pacific Rim. The special effects are done very well. Yes. And for a movie that maybe didn't have as big of a budget as something like Star Wars or, you know, most of the Michael Bay shit has incredibly <laughs> high fucking budget numbers. Say whatever you want about Michael Bay. That guy knows fucking special effects. That so, guy knows his, chase scenes. And him, that, too, yeah. and Zack Snyder, very good visual directors. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. So, yeah, def- I, I would definitely recommend anybody check it out because it's it's good. And you don't necessarily need to see the first one mm-hmm. to... Uh, Check well, the you really, one out. really don't, because I mean, Miranda, she thought she'd seen the first one, and it turns out she, as we're watching the, as we're watching it, she's like, "Yeah, I haven't seen the first. <laughs> but like, I the way I look at Pacific Rim, I just like, I saw the trailer, and I was like, that looks like a fun Power Rangers type movie. Yeah, it's very, like, very similar to that. Yeah, like everybody's like, "Oh, the Power Rangers movie sucked." I was like, "I had a fucking blast with it. I I enjoyed the Power Rangers like, movie. Like, was it the greatest movie ever? No, but I went there, went in there expecting shit." And they actually gave me a somewhat decent like plot, and some cool stuff. Yep, I I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. There could have been stuff that was better. They'll improve on the second movie, I'm sure, because there's got to be a sequel. No, Tommy, I went in. One. Oh, you're so you're talking no, Power you Rangers right there. I went into uh, the first uh, Pacific Rim. Come like Sons of Anarchy was still going, mm-hmm. so I was a huge Ch- Charlie Hunnam fan. Uh, I had a uh, Charlie Day in it, uh, which he's, he's great. I love he's still Charlie in the Day. second one, too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Charlie Charlie Day. Uh, I love Ron Perlman. Uh, I was kind of disappointed with Ron Perlman in the first movie. <laughs> it's like Brian Cranston from Godzilla? No, not, it, not it, even it, that it, bad. It definitely wasn't that bad, but similar in a way. It, it, well, one, I don't remember them like really hyping up Ron Perlman in, in the first movie, in the trailers. Like, no, they it, didn't what, do not, it that way. That he wasn't Brian Cranston, and like, like, dude, that's that was like one of their selling points. For oh, God for Zilla. sure. I see. I'm. It was a big fucking red herring. I'm mm-hmm. the king of unpopular opinions. I'm not a big Brian Cranston fan. Good luck. gentlemen welcome to another episode of game addicts podcast the show where we talk about the modern and retro video games that we play and collect i am your host nate as always today joining me this podcast player too ap how's it going man it's going great how's it going nate it's crazy that we have i just want to get right into this man because we've put a lot of work into the game addicts podcast and we're here at episode 75 to retrospect and reflect on our show and how great we are and um we're going to kind of go over some stuff people might have missed because it you know early episodes when people really weren't tuning into our show when we first started and whatnot um so it's doing it's going really good man i'm really excited to do this show with you today but 75 episodes of our podcast is crazy it's like I don't feel like I did any work to get here, and we're already here. You know what I'm saying? I know, right? It just feels like we just started just the other day, and now here we are at 75. I'm, I'm as odd by this as you are. Uh, it, it is, it is very crazy. I feel like it's one of those things that sometimes when you're a podcaster and you're just doing a lot of different shows and whatnot, you get kind of wrapped up in which show am I doing? What am I talking about? What am I doing? What are the topics? You know? Um, but today I feel like it's like Barry Allen fucked with the timeline because I feel this is right. I feel like we've done a lot of podcasts together. I just it, something feels still a little bit weird, but that, that, I digress. That doesn't matter. Today, right. man, we're going to kind of talk about a lot of different things. We actually have an interesting past we've never discussed on this show, which is shocking. I can't even believe that we would be so foolish as to not tackle this. But we met because of a video game store. We did. That was our first interaction. Like literally, we met on two different sides of a counter. And the rest is kind of history. I feel like, I, you know, I don't, listen, I've lived a lot of life since 2007-ish, 
I think it was like mid 2007s when we met. Um, but I will say that I do recall talking to you on several occasions. You would come in, you were looking for buying games and whatnot. I think I started to kind of talk you into some of the pre-orders that I knew were going to be amazing. I don't remember if I talked you into Bioshock, but that's one that I was always proud to tell people like, you need to fucking right. check remember- this game out. I think Dark Sector was the big one you pushed that I yes. kept getting. Oh, I loved the mechanic gameplay for the Glaive in Dark Sector. Even though that game kind of gets shit on, you know, first of all, you got to think, it was supposed to be a launch title for both those systems. It mm-hmm. gets pushed back a year for the PlayStation, essentially two and a half years for the Xbox 360. And then when it does come out, it's a little bit behind in the graphical times because stuff has already progressed ahead of it. You know? Right. I think... You- I think you even had a hat with the Dark Sector glaive on it. I do. I still have that uh, still. And I actually have a, a, a necklace with the glaive keychain thing. It was, was, a, it was like that a, was such a cool... It was a cool mechanic, man. And you know, it's funny because I think about that gameplay mechanic of the glaive and how much it's used in that game. And then you think about like Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham Origins with the Batarang. It's the same fucking mechanic. It is. It's just kind of different because of how the the glaive responds to the surroundings and how it's more boomerang like than the batarang which is kind of more you have to kind of force it to do what you want it to do when you're remote right. controlling it you know um but anyways man you know we met at GameStop and I feel like there's probably like I don't you know as a it's it's weird cuz as an employee of GameStop I have stories that you probably have never heard and we'll get into those today and as a as a customer I'm sure you experienced things that happened in our store differently you know, right? So I want to know: Is there any like one moment from our past in the era of GameStop, which was like a two-year time frame, um, that sticks out to you? That's like, damn, that was a crazy moment that I'll never forget. I think it would have had to have been uh, closing down the store with you. That's still probably up there, like hiding out until the very last moment when you guys all left. <laughs> yeah, and like. Staying in the store after you had closed and just hanging out in the background so I could stay out of the sight of the cameras. Absolutely, man. That was... Uh... Like, you can stay here. You just sit over here in this corner on the ground. Like, okay. And wait until we tell you where to walk so we can leave the building. You know? Right. Um, man, those were good times, man. A lot of fun times were had in that place. Uh, I don't know if you ever knew this or not. We burned a puppet at GameStop by the dumpster. Yeah, I think... I don't know. How did you even end up with the puppet? Uh, so, from what I remember... A customer just randomly like left it on the floor, and we had it for like three weeks, and no one came back to claim it. And it was like, okay, I don't want this fucking weird puppet type fucking. It was kind of like a Raggedy Ann doll puppet, just creepy. It, it was very marionette. That's the word I'm looking for, not a puppet. Marionette, two different things. It had strings. Right? Three. Had the st- yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So, so we have it, and one night, uh, one of our former employees and I are closing, and my thought was like, well, let's just go throw it away. Just could put it in the dumpster. And he goes, no, let's fucking burn it. And for whatever reason, 19 and a half year old, 20 year old me or whatever, wherever the fuck I was at that time was like, sounds like a great idea. Let's do it. This thing was putting off a humongous fucking flame. If any one cop would have drove by, they'd probably been like, the fuck y'all doing? Do I need to call your manager yeah. and see what the fuck is going on here? Luckily, that did not happen. Right. Um, but that's not even I mean, that's like a tamer story for for that time. Another story that I think about that you probably don't know about, and this is a, a way more fucked up one. I feel like this deserves to go on something like Butt Stuff Podcast where they're a little bit more uh, <laughs> R-rated. But um, So one day I'm not at work. This is the craziest story I have because I was not at work. I'm sitting at home, and I'm watching Doctor Who. Uh, this was my first watch through of the new era of Doctor Who right when I first became a fan. And I get a phone call, and it's Sarah. And there's disgust in the air. There's a little bit of giggling, you know, I'm not sure what's going on. So it comes to light that they had uh, an older lady and her slightly younger daughter, who was still an adult at that point, come in and request to use the bathroom. There was not a public bathroom in GameStop, and the reason was not because we didn't want people to come and, and use the facilities, because we were trying to be rude. Sometimes we actually kept game systems in the bathroom. It, which it was like our secondary system lock, you know? So I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, oh, these guys, they came in, you know, to, to, they were, they were asking about the bathroom. We said no. And then like, they started to walk away. What's going on? You know, not really sure. 
and apparently this old lady shit on the floor at GameStop. In the actual? In the actual store, on the floor, by the DS games. That's real. There was terror. Like, just, there was real terror in their voices. You could did hear Did she it. drop her pants and do no, it? No, she just, just let it roll, man. And just rolled out of the bottom oh, of her yeah. pants? Oh, yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Never a... Yeah. So, like, they were getting disinfectant wipes and cleaners and all this stuff and feeling sick and had to shut the store down temporarily and stuff. I mean, it's like, it's, I mean, it's one thing if it's dog shit, but human shit on the floor. It's like, what do you do in that situation? (laughs) But not like, it wasn't like a solid, if if you feel what I'm saying. It was just there. It was like a a cream on the ground. Oh, God, that's the worst description you could say. A cream on the ground. No. Uh, pudding? pudding? Oh better? no, no, that's even even worse. Okay. Anyways, let's get off this. <laughs> Gotta shit. stop metaphor. So, if you ever heard this other show that I host with um, the Journey into Comics, or actually the Foodies Watching Movies dude, uh, Brando and I have done a couple shows together, and right. um, Brando and I were talking about the West story. Do you know the famous West story? I know of Wes. I don't know of the West story. Okay, so th- I guess this is actually more the infamous West story. Wes and I are going to get ready to close the store and we it's like i think we closed it like nine so it's like probably seven at this time and wes is like hey nate check out this fucking cool barbie phone i found on the ground and he holds up this pink plastic barbie cell phone it's a flip phone right it's 2008 people didn't have fucking super smartphones like we do now so it's this fake Barbie phone. Wes is like, why don't we break it? I was like, oh, that sounds funny. Ha ha, cool, great. I don't know why we were so destructive there at that time, but I guess we were kids, so that's what we were doing. Anyways, he throws it on the ground. It does nothing. He stands on it. It does nothing. He fucking throws it again. It does nothing. He smacks it on the counter. It does nothing. He can't break this fucking phone, and he's getting mad. So now it's become Wes's mission. No matter fucking what, he is determined. I'm breaking this phone. I'm going to figure it out. So he, you know, I mean, I guess in some way he used a little bit of in- ingenuity. He looks at the system lock door. He looks at me. I don't hear him for a while. And he goes, uh, Nate, um, come here. We have a problem. And I'm like, we have a problem? Did you fucking hurt yourself breaking the phone, you dumbass? Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Tyler O'Clock. What's up, everybody? This is your host, Tyler, on a special episode of The Voice of Survival during Fool's Week. I've got a special guest here this week. One of my very good friends, Travis Wilson. How you doing today, Travis? Not bad. How are you? Thanks for having me. I had a really, really shitty week this week, so I'm glad to be doing a podcast with one of my very good friends and uh, learning some more about you. That's what this show is all about. It's not about who I am as the host. Anybody that listens knows who I am from Podcastrophy and Game Addicts and all the other podcasting stuff that I do, but... This episode's all about you. So, well, all right. Are you ready for that? I am ready. You ready to talk about yourself for a long time? Sure. <laughs> I, do, I do that a lot anyway. All right. Well, Travis, starting off, tell me, tell me where you're from. Um, I was originally born in Vermont. My dad was in the service. He was in the army. Um, so I was born in the blizzard of '78. For those of you who are old, like I am. You probably remember the blizzard of 78. It was terrible. Um, There were several different states that were damn near shut down. Um, And and what's what's interesting about that, you know, obviously I wasn't alive then, but the blizzard of 78 shut states down that are normally equipped to handle um, blizzard-like conditions. You know, a lot of times states like Texas, Florida, Alabama, most of the states in the Gulf – 
they get snow occasionally in the last, you know, 10 years or so. They get snow pretty regularly, and they shut schools down and shut interstates down and the whole shebang because they just don't have the equipment nope. to handle it, and e- even, a, you know, an extremely small amount. So when a blizzard of that magnitude shuts down states that are used, especially on the eastern seaboard where they're, they're used to dealing with feet of snow at a time, yep. you know, so... That that was a pretty big deal. It was huge, and people still talk about it. You know. Oh yeah, everywhere. I mean, it's yeah. Every, you hear about it every winter. Um, we'll get like you know a foot of snow here. We live in Indiana here in the Midwest. We get a foot of snow and be like, well, it's nothing like the blizzard of '78 because that's how that's how amazing and powerful this storm was. It just it pretty much put the whole Midwest and eastern northeastern states on shutdown yep um the funny thing about that was is like i said my dad was in the service he and my mom owned one vehicle and it was an mg so obviously my mom went into labor and they couldn't take the mg out because the roads were ridiculous and the only thing that they could get was i uh, my mom went on public transportation. She got on a bus, and the bus took her to the hospital. God damn! And yeah, so um, they like said I was born in Vermont, and my dad was in the service. And um, you know, after that, I think I maybe lived in Vermont maybe nine months to a year. So not very long at not all. Not very long, and obviously, I don't remember any of it. Um, from Vermont, we went to South Carolina, where he was stationed at Fort Jackson for a little bit. Um, and after that, I think he went to the West Coast in um, California somewhere, back to where my mom's originally from. And then uh, my dad had a heart attack. Um, and he was young. I think he might have been 35 or 36 years old when he had his first heart attack. Um, and then this whole ordeal with the government and him trying to get pensions and stuff like that because they medically discharged him after that. Right. He served 18 and a half years in the Army. He was a senior master drill sergeant. So he didn't get his 20. He did not get his 20. That sucks. And they basically said, you know, hey, you're done. And he's like, well, you know, he tried to get a desk job to finish out his 20 years and right. they wouldn't give it to him. Because it's a liability because, thing. At yeah, that point. basically what it was, it was all liability. So they just got rid of him. So he moved um, down to Brazil, Indiana, which is where I spent pretty much all my childhood from the age of six until 18. Mm-hmm. I graduated high school and I moved up to here to West Lafayette to go to Purdue. Um, and while I was at Purdue, uh, you know, I went to school for aeronautical technology and aviation maintenance, basically an airplane mechanic. What made you want to do that? Uh, my brother-in-law actually did the same thing. And when I graduated high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Right. Like I, most know, of us. Like most of us. And of course, you know, they tell you, you have to go to college. You, if you want to get a good paying job, you have to go to college. You have to do this. You can't not go to college and expect to make something of your life. So, you know, I got accepted into Purdue, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And mm-hmm. since I had somebody in the family who did it, and he said he loves it, and he actually doesn't even work on aircraft. He was working at a facility that makes aircraft parts, and he was like the uh, quality assurance inspector mm-hmm. kind of deal. So any parts that they made for aircraft, and I'm talking like, you know, not little Cessnas or Pipers. I'm you're, talking, you're talking like jet commercial engine. aircraft. Yeah, so like turbine engine parts and stuff like that. He did quality assurance to make sure, you know, they met the specs for, um, you know, like Rolls-Royce engines and, right. um, you know, the big Boeing, Lockheed Martin, stuff like that. That's where he got his job at, and he said he loves it, so I was like, Fuck it, why not? Well, see, and that that's actually an interesting take because, you know, I've worked in the manufacturing industry. You've worked in the manufacturing yes. industry um, kind of on two different sides. And we're going to talk about uh, your, your career, I'm going to call it, here in a little bit. Okay. Um, but we've had very bad experiences with the, you know, quote-unquote typical engineer type person. Oh, yeah. Or... 
you know, the ramrod guy that, well, this is my job, and, and I don't know how to do your job, but I'm going to tell you how to do it type of person. Oh, yeah. And it, it's really, it, it's kind of nice to hear that somebody who, you know, has the education and the skills to work or fix fix something or to work on or fix something and they're there while it's being built yes so you know that's that's a job and life experience saying well hey you know i've seen this part fail at this time period based on these factors so we might want to change how we do stuff um kind of at the beginning of the road so we avoid that uh at the tail end that's that's kind of neat to hear that that you know, and especially so many of us go through our lives hating our fucking jobs. Oh, yeah. You know, I say it all the time. It's one of those corny Facebook quotes that you see all this all the time. But we weren't put on this earth to pay bills and die. So and, you know, there's the the, the standard. If you love what you do, yeah, you don't work a day say. in your life, yeah. you know, but that that's, that's really cool, especially that he, he could kind of guide you down that path whether you stuck with it or not it, it was nice to have somebody to kind of look up to in that regard yeah and the actually i had a lot of res, i have i don't had i have a lot of respect for my brother-in-law because of how much of a passion he had for doing it even while he was at purdue mm -hmm. that degree is a four-year degree i mean a standard four-year degree and that's like 18 credit hours every semester it's a lot of work right and for those of you who are listening who don't know, 18 credit hours at college is basically the equivalent of a 40-hour-a-week job. Mm -hmm. Because not only do you have class time and lectures, but you also have labs that you have to do, and then homework, studying, reading books, and... The whole shebang. The whole shebang. And it's, like I said, it's a 40-hour-a-week job. He got it done in three years. That's good. So he was doing 20 to 21 credit hours every semester. And Hell yeah. I mean, he's a total workaholic. He's a gun nut, which, you know, whatever. I like guns. I'm cool. I'm Heritage. down with it. Yeah. But, um, I mean, he just he just blasted through it. And, I mean, he was on the dean's list. Um, he still went out and partied. He just, I mean, when it came to, he knew he was going to be doing this for the rest of his life, so he didn't fuck off with it. He's right. like, hey. You know, I have well, to know I'm sure this he was, stuff. I'm, I'm sure he was paying for it himself, too. Oh, yeah. And you can tell the people that go to school like that that are paying for it themselves. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are there every day. They don't miss classes. Well, they're invested. Well, yeah. You know, that's an investment. I, 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 I've, talked investment. About it, I've talked about it on Podcastrophy before, the Podcastrophy before how I feel about um, the expectations of society on getting a college degree. It's time for Brews with Babes. Ah, juicy. Hello, I'm Lauren Million. Uh, welcome to our first installment of Brews with Babes. I'm here with my fellow babe, Veronica Evans. What's up? Hi, <laughs> not much. My other fellow babe, Sarah. Yo. <laughs> And my other fellow babe, Keith Evans. Yeah, I'm a babe. <laughs> That's Welcome, sweet. Keith. <laughs> okay, so. I like this already. This is very <laughs> NPR. -ish. I know we've got a good spread out. We got some cheese. We got some brews and some booze. Nice. Yeah, we're up here on a Sunday. We debated if we nice. wanted to say this was uh, <laughs> booze with babes or brews with babes. Oh, yeah. Right. We went with. Uh, that was not a sound effect. That was <laughs> very was, real. I real. saw it myself. Real, real time. time. Real time effects. Real time yeah. effects, guys. Nate's gonna be our <laughs> Somalia, whatever the hell they're called. What? I don't know what that is. Somalian. Dude, Somalian Som pirate. Somalian pirate. <laughs> <laughs> He's our, our glass pour pirate today. I'm not expected to drink all four of these, am I? No, you're yeah, no. Okay. Okay, so we're going to be reviewing no. Lauren's beer first, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Lauren, tell us about your beer. Um, it's a Russian Imperial Stout. It's an old Rasputin. Um, I first got this when I moved home and I went to Twincade one night they had. Or it might have been mm. Beer Geeks that I first had it. I can't remember where I first had it. But either way, it's a pretty strong stout. It's 9%. That is strong. Nine percent. Yeah. I had one that was eighteen percent oh, that I was gonna bring. Eighteen? Yeah. That's like. Well, what is Dark Lord? 
Dark Lord's like he, it's it, more, isn't it? Yeah, it's like twenty, twenty, some twenty some percent. But it rides the, the spirit, line. This spirit is, is still it's really strong. Okay, I first got well, this. Clearly, at beer, <laughs> yeah. I first got this at Beer Geeks, um, maybe or not not this beer, but um, I first got the Worldwide Stout at Beer Geeks maybe like a year ago. Okay, it's very strong. It basically tastes like motor oil. Wonderful. Oh, so why did you pick it? Because she likes motor oil. She, I, didn't, so no, much. I, didn't, I didn't pick the one that tastes like motor oil. This is only the 9% one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I misunderstood. Yeah, I, I, I was going to bring like the other one, but I ended up dropping one of them when I was cleaning out my fridge this past Monday. So, oh, no. yeah, I dropped it. It shattered all over the kitchen oh, floor. Oh, Jesus. I had to clean it up. And That's awful. It was a mess, mm. yeah. The worst. Was it meant to be? No. no. Until now, let's cheers, everyone. Yeah. Okay, first beer, cheers. You'll have to add the sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh. <laughs> that's beer. And oh, that's a beer. Yeah, that's beer. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, no, that's a, it's it got like a coffee flavor to it. <laughs> kind of. It's all the things I hate. Um, I like it. <laughs> like I hate beer. coffee. I hate stouts. But I drink them. Like I mean, you know. Well, if you're not gonna yeah. do it, you gotta down the drain it one shot. I, ooh, I oh, need to see this bottle. I can do that. Give Sarah the bottle. Wait, what? I want to see the bottle. Okay, I had to see this guy on here because, like, he's spooky. <sighs> This bottle has got, like, this spooky dude that's, like, blessing you, right? <laughs> like, he's doing, like, this Catholic thing. It's like, like a, But he looks like... It's like Rasputin, man. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Like a religious Edgar Allan Poe. But, like, Poe. the picture of him on here is, like, it's really... Very spooky. Spooky, you know? It is. Spooky guy. But it does taste Russian. <laughs> it tastes very Russian. It has lots of... Does it? Whatever that means. I don't know what it means, but to me it tastes Russian right now. I don't like that. It tastes collusion. Yeah, you don't like the lingering. <laughs> it, tastes, it does linger a little bit. It tastes like collusion. <laughs> we have to oh my, my beer, which is probably the strongest beer. I don't know. Well, I don't know what mine tastes like, because I, I just picked one off the shelf that was random. Oh, you just <laughs> randomly picked it? Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. I oh, um, thought we could all yeah. have a surprise tasting yeah, I together. I don't think I'm going to be able to drink the whole thing. <laughs> uh, oh, this dude. is fucking awful. <laughs> do you guys have uh, Tums or Heartburn medicine here? Or? I do. Okay, cool. Do we, yeah. Not yet. I was just saying, I know, but I'm sure you know, we, carry, we, we carry it all because we also host uh, Dreaming the Comics Network, Foodies Watching Movies podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So we have a lot of Tums. And, I thought uh, you were going to yeah, you just did a podcast about Tums, which would be... Well, Oh, I mean, that would be fabulous. <laughs> Just, <laughs> for a certain demographic, yes. Yeah, we'll that would probably be, be hilarious. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not going to continue to drink this old Rasputin bullshit. Um, <laughs> I like it. I like the bitter, lingering kind of beers. I, I like it, too. I like beer. It's I mean, it's very beer. beery. Yeah. Like, I know a lot of people, like a lot of my friends, who would love that. I think I'm pretty sure... Uh, Mary has had that, mm-hmm. and like probably yeah. your fiance. She likes that shit. Yeah. <laughs> she likes really uh, strong beers. Yeah, she likes. Yeah. She weirdly likes her alcohol, like or beer, or whatever, like to taste like food. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Okay. I was like, I like to keep it separate. Like, I don't even like drinking a beer a while I'm eating. Then? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I just drink water to like clear my palate. Why don't why you get the blueberry yeah. lager then? Huh? I love that. That's not okay. food. It's food. Like, it's different. It does have quite a blueberry flavor, though. I've had that before, I think. But we're not Wild doing blue. that one next. So the next yeah. one we're doing oh, is I this see. very prissy, girly oh. drink that I procured today because I fucking hate drinking beer. So uh, I got, like, the pinkest shit I could find, mm. and it's Angry Orchard's new rosé. This is the most Wrigley Village thing you could find. Ooh. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... Let's see. Second, not okay, we're not there yet. He's getting it's more. It smells interesting. I don't Talk know what it smells lives. like. Ooh, I don't know what it smells like. It almost reminds me of medicine. Yeah, I don't know about this. We're going to see. This is going to be I'm very suspect. Yeah. I'm not a frou-frou drinker, Maybe so. it's like, it almost it it smells, smells like, like water. Farm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, it had some weird, like, old school smell to it. It's got some Kool-Aid notes to it. Yeah, like, yeah. Like watered-down Kool-Aid. So you guys ever watered do down the Kool-Aid. teenage shit of, like, uh... Boone's Farm and Burnett's. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Don't worry, I also brought some peach stuff. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. See. Okay, cheers, right. everyone. Cheers. 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 To the whatever the hell this is. Cheers. 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 
Lucy, I kind of like it. It's real good. I yeah. don't like it. It doesn't have any flavor. It tastes like what it smells like. Maybe we need wax. to have some kind of <laughs> smells like wax. 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 Yeah. Uh-huh. We need to like sip some water in between beverages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we need to yeah. like, yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I just had that like beer beer that's like, I'm a beer. That it takes a mouth of a very masculine beer. A I'm white girl just met with a Russian guy, <laughs> and that's the taste I have in my mouth. No, wow. that, is, that is a very <laughs> specific taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, not familiar Russian with this taste. taste. Like yeah, still collusion. Yeah, still collusion. Yeah. Still collusion. yeah. Okay. It's good, though, Like as far as like rosé goes. Rosé is just like slightly flavored champagne to me, and yeah. it's like... yeah. It tastes, I don't like I'm not shame. sure if it should be more carbonated or not. That's, that's what I'm thinking. thinking. But that's the problem. This is an apple cider. This isn't actually really a rosé. Right. So this it's is like not a rosé flavored cider. It's a rosé flavored yeah. cider. Okay. So it's like now I got apple it. rose water. There's the flavor. How much percent yeah. is that's, it? That's what I'm tasting. Oh, it's like, 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 here, like apple juice. It's been, <laughs> but it tastes like Thank if you. you put like water in there and then switched it around after apple juice had already been in the cup. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Has yep. that like... Not it's got cider like a hint taste, of like this flowery rose to it. Like it's water. It's water. Yeah, it's, it's a five point five percent alcohol by volume. Okay. Well, that's respectable. It's got it a very like. Instagram uh, worthy pink label that mm-hmm. I'm sure all the ladies love. Oh yeah. Love. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did we buy this at Tart? No, we got this at Whole Foods. <laughs> okay. All right. I had that, I'll um, drink the whole thing of this. That rosé that I was telling you about, that white girl rosé. Mm-hmm. Uh, they liked one of my Instagram. Oh, pictures real? recently <laughs> or videos because this we had this dude at thing he was drinking white girls in uh Darius Kennedy and it was hilarious like he was just going on and on and I was like you should get your royalties now for this commercial that they liked because yeah. yeah white girl rose white girl rose <laughs> okay. all right that'll be on the next uh potential bruise with babes <laughs> you decide to keep doing this Mm-mm-mm. wow so you don't like it yeah, I mean, if somebody handed it to me, it's booze, and I would might drink it. Right. But I feel like if I drank more than one of these, I would get a headache. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let's move on to the next yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Shall we? What's the next oh, one we're going to do? You want to do the blueberry one, since we're kind of like on a fruity kick? Yeah, we can do that. And then end with a, a real beer from uh, yeah. Sarah. Mine also <laughs> had a, I had a pint. Well, oh, shit. Mine has a fruity kind of thing. Allegedly, I don't know. There we go. Oh, are we rating all these beers it. at the end? Like, are we giving yeah. them? Yeah, oh, so yeah. what are we doing? Like, are we doing like a, Let me get some a rating paper. system? Hey. <laughs> no, we can do it usually like out of one five. Oh, one out of five. Okay. Are we doing one out of five or one out of ten? Oh, your call. Show. One out of seventeen. Yeah. One out of ninety-six. Well, yeah, just make it very complicated. <laughs> Start doing brackets. Is that Borsen. good? Yeah. What kind is that? Borzen. Borzen? It's fancy. It's fancy? I might have to taste that. Podfather's just going to sneak onto your show real quick and say what's up to our listeners. Do I have everybody's attention now? It's WrestleMania weekend, Brando, and I'm super jacked, and I don't even know where to really begin. I don't know if we want to start with the NXT stuff, or we want to jump into WrestleMania yeah. stuff, or... Let's okay. go with the NXT stuff. I mean, you didn't even know they were doing a North American Championship, which is their new uh, second title for NXT. Yeah, they're like, essentially their first Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, it, it's it, it, what I like about it is a, it is like a mid-card, or... Uh, you know, under the, like the main, like, like kind of like an undercard title, but the design of it is very old school. It's very kind of like a hint, like a look back to some of the older uh, regional promotions, and I, I really dig it. Oh man, uh, let's see. There is only five matches on this card. <clears throat> Yes, and all, but almost all of them are going to be worth watching. Of course, we have the big grudge match. It's unsanctioned, so that's pretty much what they call a grudge match <laughs> these days. Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, if Gargano wins, he's re- be reinstated. If Ciampa wins, he is banished forever from the land of NXT. be a fun match to watch for sure. So uh, it's interesting because either way that can go 
either Gargano is gone and goes up to the main roster or he's back in NXT doing work for a while and continuing that feud. So it's a win-win. Good good call there. Exactly. And, of course, with the injury uh, to, was it Bobby Fish? Yes. Adam Cole is going to be pulling double duty because he's going to be in the ladder match to crown the first ever NXT North American champion. Adam Cole, EC3, Killian Dane, Lars Sullivan, Ricochet, and Velveteen Dream. That would be a great match. That is the uh, the almost the required ladder match for the for the WrestleMania weekend that's being held on, on NXT this year, which I'm not upset about because it's like for a while there, WrestleManias had just money in the bank matches, ladder matches. It's like, man, they're cool, but after a while, you've kind of seen all you can see. And so I'm kind of glad that that, that it, like it's not on the main thing this year. But uh, Adam Cole's pulling double duty because we he's also going to be teaming up with uh, Kyle O'Reilly. And uh, this is a double, man. Winner take all. Triple threat. Undisputed era. Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly versus the authors of Pain and Ro- versus Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne. The winners will be crowned the new... NXT tag, or, you know, they will be the tag team champions. And also, the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic victors for this year. Uh, that's going to be really cool to watch. We're going to go to uh, predictions here in a second when we go back down the card. But Ember Moon defending the title against Shayna Baszler. Good Is call. Shayna Baszler, Baszler. Uh, um, then she, the, the Queen of Spades. Yeah, yeah. Then, of course, on Andrade C. and Almas defending the NXT title versus Aleister Black. So, let's go right back down to the beginning. Gargano sure. and Champa. Of course, this feud has been building since last year. Unfortunately, when they did the split, Champa was injured. So, we kind of had to wait. But sometimes waiting makes it all the more sweeter because now here we are. WrestleMania weekend. These two guys are going to have a hell of a match, I guarantee you. Nate, who do you got taking this one home? You know, uh, it's interesting here because, like I said earlier, what's up, Kitty Cat? We're ta- we're trying to talk about Gargano Ciampa. They used to be best friends, and now they fucking hate each other, okay? So anyways, Johnny Gargano, I believe, um, needs to move up to the main roster because I feel like Johnny Wrestling has made his name, and he's kind of spinning his tires. I don't see him going on to win an NXT world title, not that he doesn't deserve to win it. I just feel like it's time to bump him up to the next level. And really, maybe Tommaso Ciampa would not be too far behind him in that regard. Uh, do you squash the feud that quickly? Maybe not. Um, but I think at the end of the day, ultimately, I pick I pick Johnny Gargano to actually win and stay in NXT. I think he kind of needs to win. I think he needs a feel-good moment. Champa could still get some of his heat back and not let it be a complete happy moment for Gargano. But I think uh, I, th- I think he definitely needs to win here uh, for sure. I'm with you on that. Unsanctioned means so, that it's like no DQ, no countouts. Yeah. Uh, unsanctioned is just a classy way of saying, well, this is going to be dangerous. And... Uh, He's not technically under contract, so we don't officially recognize this match. It's just a play on words, really. Uh, uh, yeah, but un- unsanctioned usually means that, that kind of anything goes. Well, I'm actually curious, Brando. Who do you got for this ladder match to crown the first NXT North American <sighs> champ? Man. It's a fucking stacked match, bro. I mean, there are literally there are literally six guys that could become the first North American champ. Like, Feasibly, any one of the six could walk away with the title. It's like, do you give it to Adam? Uh, especially if another team is going to win the tag titles. Yeah, but have him. Because huh. Authors of Pain won the won the Dusty Rhodes thing last year. Yep. Um. I like this rogue ass team of Roderick Strong and Pete Dunn. We'll get to that in a second, but back to this ladder match, man. Uh look at the tenure. There's really only like 
two tenured guys in NXT that are in this match for this North American title, and then everybody else has had success elsewhere. Well, I guess except for Velveteen Dream, really. I guess he's pretty much an NXT-made star as far as I know. Was he anywhere else that you can recall other than, like, Indies before he started in NXT? I think the Velveteen Dream gimmick is WWE Performance Center born, but I don't know if if he was anywhere else, to be honest with you. I don't know. Okay, I, I can actually probably just click this thing right here and look it up. So, um, but like you look at it, and Lars Sullivan's been around for a hot minute. Do you give him a moment in the sun before he gets shipped up to the big leagues if they need him? Is he just spinning his tires in NXT for the rest of his career since he's, you know, I think he's an older dude. He's got to be getting up there a little bit. Um, All right, I'm I'm giving it to Adam Cole. Okay, you're taking Adam Cole. Bay Bay. Uh okay, uh the guy who wrestles is Velveteen Dream Patrick Clark Jr., who was born in nineteen ninety five, let that sink in. Uh did <laughs> tough enough in twenty fifteen, which was the sixth season. Uh he was one of the favorites to win the competition. He was eliminated in the fifth episode due to a perceived lack of humility, placing ninth overall in the series, and then Appearing in 2017, or in 2015, he started doing stuff uh, for NXT to now. So he's pretty much a WWE-made star at this point. So that's cool. That's Velvet. Who do you got? Who do I have in this match, man? Uh, You know, honestly, I think the title was created for him. I'm going to go with EC3. I really think that he... You know, he's the kind of guy that he comes into a company and they go, man, you know, we've been trying to do another title and it'd be cool if we put you in the mix. And then now they've got all this great talent. I mean, all these guys vying for this spot, anything coming out of this match in the NXT North American Championship match, whether it's Adam Cole versus EC3 furthering a feud or whether it's EC3 Killian Dane or Adam Cole Ricochet or Velveteen Dream EC3 or Velveteen Dream Ricochet or Laura Sullivan Killian Dane. The fucking matchups are endless within the match, but then also the spin out and the fallout from who wins this belt and then where do they go? Because they got to keep it going. They can't just say, okay, well, someone won the title. We're fucking done caring about it now. You know, they have to kind of do something else with it. So uh, looking forward and what might be, I think I'm actually going to go. Yeah, EC3 is definitely my pick. He's the guy. They they picked they picked him to win a title. Uh putting him on TV at the the last big takeover event and teasing him and then now he's been in the company for a little bit doing work since the end of his uh run at TNA or Impact Wrestling as it were. Yep, uh EC three. Let's move on to this tag match, Brando. Triple threat for the tag titles and Dusty Rhodes tag team classic trophy. We've got Undisputed Era, Authors of Pain, and then uh Strong Dunn. <sighs> <laughs> Who do you have? Undisputed Era. Really? So Adam Cole is going to just be doing work. This will be a match. That's interesting because that will be, depending on where they put that, that could be the first match of the night maybe, the tag match first. Well, uh, they could do the ladder match first, or they could put the tag match uh, next to last. What I want to see is I want to see Adam Cole barely make it out of the ladder match with the winner. Okay. And then he's going to come in because the whole they they've been building up, you know, you know, basically William Regal putting him in a tough spot. Always, yeah. It's like pick one, you know, or do both. And now he's doing both, and he, it's almost like he's the victim. But then, in true heel fashion, he wins. Or they, and then they win. So now, he's holding up all the trophies going, what now?
Forbidden podcast about books. I am not your host, Joanna. I am Veronica from Foodies Watching Movies podcast. And joining me today, as always, it seems, <laughs> my guest and co-host of Foodies Watching Movies, Nate Phillips. I don't know how the fuck I snuck onto literature all of a sudden. <laughs> this was not a part of the plan, but I'm here now. And I'm here and I'm excited to join you on this journey. Not into comics, but into literature. Wow, what a pro. <laughs> That's me. That's what I do here. I'm the pod deucer and the pod father. And, you know, um, when we decided we were going to do this uh, Fool's Week thing, well, I'll let you get into it. You want to get into it? Okay, I can get into it. Happy April Fool's Week, everybody, from the Journey in the Comics Network. Um, we decided that it would be fun to put all the names in a hat of all of the hosts across the network and do a drawing and switch switch it up, shake it up for, for fun, for April Fool's Day. Why not, right? So, of course, I knew that this was going to fucking happen, that when my name got pulled from the hat, Mr. Nate Phillips <laughs> also knew that this was probably going to happen, and I almost thought he did it on purpose, but... He swears that he didn't. I got picked to host the Journey into Wrestling podcast. And I immediately responded with, a oh, fuck no. Are you? No. No, no, no. So <laughs> Nate got an angry text from me about it. And uh, <laughs> do you want to tell the story? Yeah. So <clears throat> uh, the way we did it was I talked to Brando and... April Fools has always kind of been a thing that pervaded me. I never got to do cool foolsy tricks, prankstery things. And now that I'm like running this network, I was like, what can we do for April Fools that no one else is doing? And the hat idea got brought up. Like, what if we all just fucking switch? So I essentially made like slots for where co-hosts and hosts go. And then I had so I had one cup that had those names and one cup that had our actual names. We drew randomly, and the video is on our private Facebook group that's for, like, the the hosts, and I posted it right there, and yeah, you got you got drawn to do wrestling, uh, as did Kate from uh, Butt Stuff Podcast. That's right. I forgot. Caitlin was also picked to co-host Journey into Wrestling, and I'm pretty sure she had the exact fucking response that I had and it's no hard feelings against the journey into wrestling podcast you know I've got mad love for you guys for sure obviously but I don't want to fucking talk about wrestling because I have nothing to say about it I don't watch wrestling I don't get down on it it's not my jam you know so I didn't want to shit all over your guys's parade and piss people off and you know make fun of something that I don't even care enough about to make fun of and I know what you're going to say. I know you think that I secretly love wrestling because I hate on it. But I don't, like, actively hate on it unless you're making me, oh. <laughs> No, it's not that you actively hate on it. It's that you guys, <laughs> let me tell you, I spent a lot of time with V. And the, it, so many times she drops funny wrestling quips. Well, and just it, for you. But it's not, but it's. but I it, know you like that. No, I know that you know that I like that. But it doesn't mean that I do. Okay. Um. Hold on. So let me just say that it does because <laughs> she has an opinion on like certain wrestlers and whatnot, which means they're doing their job. They're paid to make you love or hate them, and she hates certain ones that you're supposed to hate. So, hey, it works out. <laughs> uh, that's just how it goes here. I uh, also want to mention today that we were planning, like I said, Veronica was going to do this solo mode, and we only brought one mic. That's me not planning very intelligently, so we're kind of sharing here. So she may uh, dip in and out of quality because we're going to be kind of going back and forth here. But I'm going to let you take back over your podcast. Long story short, you and Caitlin leveraged Brando and myself to not make this happen. There was a compromise. Uh, Brandon found himself doing foodies this week. Uh, with Kate mm -hmm. and then literature became a show and it was like oh that's going to release during fool's week what are we going to do about that we didn't even think about that and I was like well Kate's got that like why don't we just put Veronica on lit and then you know you know books and stuff so here we are uh, I'm going to let you kind of take it away again this is your show and not the journey into comics podcast that is correct anyway <laughs> Okay, so once this magical switch of fate happened, 
I, I, you know, naturally got nervous about it because I've never had to do like a solo cast before. And it wasn't something that I was particularly thrilled about doing. So I, I asked Nate if he would be my guest today. And he's like, well, what would I even talk about? Because you're going to be talking about Stephen King. Because obviously, if I'm going to do a podcast about books, it's going to start with Stephen King, one of my favorite authors. And we're going to read one of my or talk about one of my favorite books. I have a quick question just from the peanut gallery because I actually don't know this. Why is Stephen King one of your favorite authors? Just his body of work? Is there a certain um, way he writes that draws you in? Is it a mixture of the fact that he has quality books that sometimes hit the mark in the movie realm and then sometimes are odd ad adaptations that don't really make sense to what the book does? W what about Stephen King actually draws you to him? Yes, all those things. <laughs> Pretty much that. Yeah, all those things. You covered it. <laughs> I love Stephen King. Um, my love for Stephen King books goes back to my childhood with my mother, of course, because she had like almost all of the Stephen King books that she had just owned, you know, from when she was in high school and stuff. And actually, the, the book that I'm going to be talking about today, Skeleton Crew, was her copy uh, from when she was, you know, still Joseph Merkel. <laughs> yeah, it's got her name written in it and everything. And the cover is almost completely ripped off on both sides. It's it's seen better days. But, you know, I, I just recently moved and I was unpacking some boxes and I was unpacking my book boxes and found this book in there. And I was like, oh, my God, I've got to reread this book. I got to show I got to show this book to our friend Sarah. She's going to love it. And um it was kind of interesting timing because we had just recently gone shopping and picked up uh, a copy of Creep Show 2, which is this horrible movie from the 80s that has um like vignettes. It's like a it's like a how would you describe Creep Show 2? Like a comic book. I feel like Creep Show 2 is essentially a take on telling stories between two mediums where they use live action and comic book style yeah animation to bridge those two worlds together to tell really interesting creepy weird hilarious bizarre what the fuck stories that you would only find in like a creep show styled comic book right because it's got that campy kitsch factor to it and uh i like that i i can appreciate a shitty b movie from the 80s and i'm i'm currently trying to collect all of them i've got creep show one creep show two cat's eye which is uh the drew barrymore vehicle from the 80s where she was a tiny precious little girl and uh what else what other ones were we talking about well anyway um so today we were going to talk about skeleton crew that that was kind of like my main area of focus today we're reading my mom's copy um this book was published in june of 1985 um what are you showing me Oh, Skeleton Crew, Stephen King Vintage, 1986, first print. It's exactly the same as this. Okay, this 12 bucks on eBay. Not bad. Not bad. I prefer the shitty beat-up copy that has my mom's name written in it, though, if that's okay. <laughs> anyway, you asked me why, why I wanted to pick Stephen King, and mostly like because of how like his work affected me so much as a young child, seeing... like some of the movies when I really shouldn't have, thanks to my mother, letting me watch Children of the Corn when I was, like, really little. And that'll mess you up. Speaking of Children of the Corn, there was a trailer for it before Creepshow 2. Do you remember those trailers? Yeah, yeah. The the movie we just watched, Creepshow 2, had trailers for horrible old movies, including Children of the Corn. I mean, I don't think Children of the Corn is a, a particularly horrible movie from what I seen I, what I've seen of it I you know I never actually saw the whole movie um not that we're foodies watching movies right now because we could easily slip into that but yeah. not that I've seen that whole movie uh but from what I saw of it it always looks so terrifying and even the way they portray that trailer is like oh my god fuck that and I lived in the cornfields you know yes you are a corn husker after all <laughs> corn jerker fail. corn jerker whatever Ooh. anyway so children of the corn scarred me because I live in lived in Northwest Indiana as a child and were surrounded on all sides by cornfields. 